I'll call the meeting to order. And our first order of business this evening is considering approval of the Plan Commission meeting minutes of March 13th and March 23rd, 2017. So moved. Second. second. There's a motion by Jensen, second by Truel. Does any commissioner wish to remove or amend an item from those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Council representative report, Alderperson Truel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, since our last meeting, we had a number of items that went to council. Um, probably the most notable uh, was the Casey's um, General Store, which we tabled at the council level mm -hmm. um, because uh, when they brought the proposal into us, they were showing access, access points on both Highway N and 51, um, and they have not gotten uh, approval on the 51 uh, side. And so uh, council tabled it. Um, Matt would so we'll, we'll, once we get that, it'll come back. Um, beyond that, um, we are continuing to move forward with the uh, substation lot uh, out on Macomb. We did approve uh, a couple of the extraterritorial zoning issues. Um, we did have take up the Hilldale Park condominium, again, the one house, uh, the one duplex that needed uh, an exclusion. Um, that was actually rejected at council, but it's coming back again next, uh, it's coming back tomorrow night. So. Um, I think that will uh, probably get approved. Uh, and then uh, the other actions that we took, uh, did it, the council did approve the combining of the lots on Nottingham and uh, again, continue to work on the substation. So hmm. I guess most, I, the biggest thing is, is uh, just noting that, that the, the Casey's uh, is, is out there pending uh, more information. Correct, thank you. Status of developments, planning director Shield. Contained in your packet is a, a, the monthly update on status of development. I think one thing that's noteworthy is just the number of single family home starts that have taken off this year. We've had eight single family home starts since the first of this year, um, which is far greater than the two that we had year to date last year. And I think that's a, a great improvement. Most of those, all but I think, actually maybe all of them have been in the Nordic Ridge subdivision. There is one new construction on the corner of Roby and um, Johnson. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, and that one may have been after the first, that might have started after the first, I recall. As well as one on the east side in Eastwood Estates. Thank you. Commissioner Hanna. <clears throat> Thanks. I just uh, any action on Shirley Lake Court? Have you heard anything from them? I saw that the permit's now been approved. Yeah, Shelley Court, um, they're looking at trying to adjust the number of buildings and the number of units possibly. Um, and, and in doing so, they may come back with a different plan. But in addition to that, um, the comprehensive plan process is plugging along. So I think they're monitoring that and, and waiting to move forward with much more at this point until some of those things come to resolution for them. Great, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> The next item on our agenda is a request by DAC Printing LLC, Dennis and Amy Kittleson, for approval of a downtown design overlay zoning district project request to remove the building at 305 315 East Main Street. We'll have a, a brief overview by Planning Director Shield. A uh, number of components in your packet. Uh, you'll recognize there's also uh, a letter, a couple of pieces of correspondence from the city attorney. You'll recognize there's a resolution for consideration, uh, which will require um, the commission to deliberate on a number of components. And um, either for or against, there's there's aspects of the, the resolution that need your, your tweaking to, to move forward. Laura Callen is here from the city attorney's office, and she's going to be able to assist with questions and the process if necessary. Thank you. So I'd like to, um, we'll close for a public hearing. And then rather than closing that public hearing, let's leave it open for a bit as we discuss and um, have our own communications in case there are others that would like to come back up and, and help us out through those deliberations. So I'll close our regular meeting and open for a public hearing. And first I have registered Amy Kittleson. Welcome. Thank you. So I think you all have the packet in front of you and the information that mm -hmm. um, what we would like to do and the answers to your 
questions, I think, on why and what and so forth. So I don't know what else you would like me to say about it, but I can answer questions or. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> and they might not have questions right now, but I'm sure as we go along, mm -hmm. some questions will mm -hmm. be generated. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd like to keep the public hearing open as well, so we can hear from you again if we need okay. have some questions. Okay. Thank you. Next, I have Colton Kittleson. Hi. Hi there. Alrighty. So I'm actually just in favor of DAC Prince plan to remove a decrepit building in the downtown area in favor of opening up the space and making the city that I've lived in for 24 years a little bit better. So, you know, I appreciate you guys letting me extend my First Amendment right to talk, and I uh, thank you for you guys' time. Great. Thank you. And next registered is Peggy Verrigan. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Peggy Verrigan. I'm here for the, with the Landmarks Commission. The Landmarks Commission would like to express its profound concern over the nature of the deliberation or lack thereof at the planned commission meeting in January to demolish 315 East Main Street and further that components of the application which were requested by Attorney Dragney have not been provided. The downtown design overlay zoning district encompasses the same area designated as the Main Street National Register Historic District. While it may be easy to argue over specific language in the ordinance, what it means and doesn't mean, and the language may not be what we would choose today, but the intent of the overlay zoning is very clear to, quote, preserve and enhance the historical quality of the downtown, unquote. It is disingenuous to suggest that the spirit of the ordinance is something else. The historical quality of the downtown is its buildings. It's also disingenuous to suggest that demolition in the district somehow is the same as preserving and enhancing the historical quality of the downtown, or that the demolition of a National Register listed building preserves and enhances the historical quality of the downtown. How does demolishing an historic building preserve the historical quality of a building? What is objectionable, objectionable about the previous discussion Regarding the demolition of 315 East Main Street, it's a lack of any thoughtful deliberation. There were numerous opinions offered about a property owner being allowed to do whatever they want with their building. But where was the critical thinking? Why were there no questions about whether this action appropriately reflects the values in the zoning overlay or discussion about how this proposed action would preserve the historical quality of the downtown? And no reasons were given for supporting demolition that referenced any part of the ordinance backing up the assertion that demolition was appropriate. Of course, further I must draw your attention to the applicant responses to Attorney Dragney's letter document. In it, the attorney clearly states that a description of conceptual open space does not provide all the required information and that the plan in the application needs to be an actual final plan for the project rather than a conceptual plan that you might change later. These materials were not provided. In fact, the application instead says they will consider uses for the space after grading and seeding. So information required before approval for demolition will not be provided until after demolition and seeding for grass is done. Clear direct answers to other questions in this document were also not provided. It would be improper to move forward evaluating this project until the required elements are submitted. Having the authority to make demolition decisions carries with it important responsibilities. Doing due diligence, seeking input from Stoughton's very own Landmarks Commission, having thoughtful deliberation, seeking viewpoints. Each demolition of an historic building in the city erases a part of our history. Making this decision shouldn't come lightly. Demolition is not reversible. A vote on this issue tonight is premature without having a thoughtful evaluation of the merits of a proposal. And as was described in the packet, a redevelopment plan has not yet been conceptualized or proposed. The Landmarks Commission urges the Plan Commission to consider this action with the seriousness and respect it deserves. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. 
And next registered is Kathleen Johnson. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm also on the Landmarks Commission. I'm new to the Council of the 2nd District, and I'm also a member of the Our Old House District also. I have a fondness for old houses and houses that need a lot of TLC, which this one does. Um, I moved to Stoughton because of it, and since I've been on the Landmarks Commission, I've learned a lot, not only from the citizens of how they want this uh, city to be represented, but also the Landmarks has a lot of basis in the facts of why they want to um, keep a historical uh, home. I myself have bought a lot of fixer-uppers. I actually bought a house on Hill Street, and we ended up calling the street Hell Street because <laughs> it was a lot of work. It was abandoned for two years. Um, the plumbing was burst out. Um, the windows were boarded up and it needed a whole lot of work but we did work on it did improve i do know i do know background of historical homes and what needs to be done on it and we ended up fixing that house up and we bought it for like for 53,000 not to boast on the money part but we turned that house around i got um, historical stained glass windows and and that house, when we sold it, was the best house in the neighborhood. We couldn't even comp it because it was so nice compared to the neighborhood. So I just want you guys to be aware that where some people look at it as a house that needs to be torn down, others in the community would love to have an opportunity to be able to fix this up. And a lot of people weren't even aware that the house was available for sale. So thank you very much. Thank you. And next registered is Susan Schuster. <clears throat> um, I'm a longtime resident of uh, Stoughton and I moved here because it was such a beautiful town um, and I own a house on Academy Street that was built in 1885. Um, uh, I, there are features in the house. It's not a big fancy Victorian. It's a humble little home but I'm trying to keep it restored in its original condition because um, I think that's important um, because this is such a historic city um, it's rare that you find cities that have that kind of awareness that you have here and you have a beautiful downtown renovated historically beautiful um, I have friends that come from out of town and they come downtown like say at night and the street lights are shining and they say, oh, I'm in your little town. I'm in your cozy little Stoughton. And I'm flattered. Um, Cottage Grove doesn't have that. Sun Prairie doesn't have that. You know how unique we are. So I had no idea that that building was for sale. I've driven past it a million times. Um, I just had no clue. I would have put an offer to purchase it, um, <clears throat> seriously, and uh, not torn it down and re restored it uh, to whatever it could be used for. But it's it's such a important location on the corner, facing Main Street, and then facing our public library, which is another proud asset of the city. This is just not like stuck back out in the country. People are going to see this all the time. And why not be consistent with the historical uh, awareness you have? I mean, this is a corner. The library, it's like a prime location for a historical renovation. And to de demolish it is just beyond my comprehension. Just. I just could not even believe that I heard that that was going to happen. And um, I think it's critical to save it. Um, it's unique. It's historic. I don't know the date that it was built, but I imagine it's 18-something. And that fits right with the rest of the city. Um, To be kind of rude, it's a no-brainer to me. Why would you want to destroy this? 
why would you allow this to be demolished? That's what I, I just don't understand. I just don't get it. And you've demonstrated your awareness and your kindness and your finances through the whole city. All these years, you build on other people's work and other people's awareness, their money. It just doesn't start today and end tomorrow. I mean, it's a long-term project. So please, save this building like you did, we all did with the Opera House. I mean, look at it. It's our, the, the uh, clock towers, the pride of the city. Mm -hmm. It's a landmark. It's a landmark town. Don't make a big mistake, because once it's gone, it's gone forever. Thank you. And that those are those those that we have registered to speak on this item. Are there others by chance? If not, I'm going to, um, Rodney, if you think this is the right way, I know that you'll have questions, but I think we'll have our attorney, Collin, sort of walk us through the resolution. Sure. Uh, um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've prepared um, a re draft resolution. Uh, it's in your packet. And the purpose of the resolution is really to uh, suggest a framework for making a decision on the application that's consistent with the standards set forth in the ordinance. Um, and this is so that if I could interject real quick, so that um, we're certain we're following all the right, the right process and the right steps in the process. That's correct. To help us frame a decision, whatever that decision might be. That's correct. Thank you. Um, and so the standard um, that should uh, guide the uh, commission tonight is set forth in um, paragraph D of the recitals and that um, restates the language of the ordinance that the plan commission shall in deciding um, uh, the application shall focus its review on the application's compliance with sound aesthetic, land use, site design, and economic revitalization practices and that this effort shall be guided by the comprehensive plan so we've taken each of those uh, standards and broken them down into sub paragraphs um, that require or suggest that the Commission answer each um, or, or make a finding corresponding to what's what's written in the resolution so it's a guide the ordinance um, provides these factors and allows great flexibility to the Commission to to weigh these factors and apply them um, in its discretion thank you hey, a quick clarification sure, Commissioner Hannah um, you said three different things does it require suggest or guide they're not required right as far as it's more of a guide it's a guide, um, uh, but you don't have to make a finding, I don't think, on, on every factor, but you have to base your decision on at least one of these factors and always be guided by the um, compre your comprehensive plan. Right. Thank you. Further questions? Otherwise, I think we'll continue to make our way through the ordinance. Rodney, if you'd like to repeat that? Or? Um, well, I think the resolution is at least a point of continuing the discussion. Um, I have it on the screen. It's in your packet. And if the commissioners would like to deliberate on any aspect of it or just um, put their thoughts into the, the record of the discussion on the item, I think that would be helpful. Commissioner Hanna. Sure. Thanks. Um, Rodney? Can you just uh, clarify, um, since we are referencing the comprehensive plan, what the current uh, zoning is uh, under the comprehensive plan? Well, the comprehensive plan doesn't assign zoning, um, but, the, but the, um, the downtown central business district, um, I believe it's currently zoned central business, which is um, the downtown zoning classification. Mm -hmm. um, that zoning classification does not allow for residential units within the first 24 feet of the ground floor of of any structure in the district and the only reason i highlighted it was mentioned about um, 
how it was probably originally constructed for a house, um, it would limit its ability to be reused as a, as a residence, at least on the first floor. Thank you. Uh, if you wanted to, I, I know I found it helpful, um, and I don't remember who. I think um, Peggy Verrigan uh, addressed a little bit of the um, the incomplete application that was submitted at the very beginning, and I know that we have an update to that application, and I don't know if you've seen that or not, Peggy, that's in our in our packet this evening. Um, she left. Peggy had to leave. Pardon me? Peggy had to leave. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> so I'm talking to no one. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, but anyway, so so for those that are at home as well as those in the, the in our room tonight, there was an updated application submitted from the Kittleson that really addressed Kittleson's that addressed some of those questions. Um, Welcome, Michael. We've had our, a public hearing on um, the yeah. um, request <coughs> to remove 305 and 315 East Main Street. And now we're deliberating while keeping that public hearing open in case you have more questions. Uh, that, so Alderperson Engelberger and then Hannah. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I could give you a lot of reasons why this should not be approved and should not even be acted on tonight. Uh, one is, one is the reason that we're, uh, we've got a conflicting ordinance. And uh, the attorney's given us some guidance on that, but uh, I guess I would like to hear from our attorney what, uh, why we would use one, one part of the ordinance regarding um, where, the, where the plan commission makes the final de uh, decision on a demolition like this. And in another place in the ordinance, it states that uh, the plan commission recommends to the council. Why would we um, follow the first part, but not follow the second part of our conflicting ordinance? It's my question to the attorney. Sure. And then I've got other questions. Um, I believe uh, my partner, Mr. Dragney, provided a memo um, setting forth um, his opinion that the um, application was governed by um, ordinance 78-913-4 4 sub c and I can't really add um, any additional value um, to the opinion he gave that I'm trying to trying to find, um, I think he said that the um, that Chapter 78 governs, and that the city is bound by another um, state statute 66.10015. Um, to act on um, the application under what the statute refers to as um, existing um, requirements. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to Mr. Dragney, those existing requirements are set forth in Chapter 78, which gives the Plan Commission um, authority to decide um, the application. Which also states currently under the CUP pr uh, procedure, the Plan Commission makes a recommendation and the City Council makes a final decision. It's in the same ordinance. So um, that explanation did not uh, make it clear to me that uh, this should be acted on until the ordinance is non-conflicting. Um, so if I can continue. Um, Peggy pretty much uh, stated it in her comments that we need to be looking at uh, the process as, uh, as opposed to opinions of, of what we're dealing with here. And I think we're kind of getting to that. I appreciate 
the attorney has given us uh, some guidance regarding that. Um, but, you know, there's still, he, he, he put a letter out to the, uh, to the owners, and I don't know if I can find it here. <coughs> I got too much stuff going here. Um, Are you looking at the January or the March no, letter, Michael? I, I'm just looking at uh, his, his most recent letter that he sent okay. to, the, yep. to the owner. And it stated the conceptual open space plan included in your application does not provide all of the required information. In addition, the plan in the application needs to be an actual final plan for the project rather than a conceptual plan that you might change later. We don't have a final plan in the packet, and <coughs> therefore, I don't think we should be <coughs> acting on this tonight. We do. Um, I think it made the packet, correct? There has been some updated. The response is in there. With uh, this. Are, uh, the are we council. taking verbal responses for plans these days for our plan commission? Um, is that how this works? This is, well, I'm not speaking on their behalf. I'm just indicating this is their, their response to his letter was in the in the packet um, and in here the color-coded responses are identified at the tail end of each of the the sections of mr. Dragney's letter I see the responses and, I, and th those are opinions those are not uh, factually based things here's a, here's another uh, in the next uh, next one down under a aesthetic considerations uh, their, their answer is, we believe the building is not contributing to the aesthetic nature of the district and does not appear to fit in with most downtown, downtown historic buildings. The fact is, this building is designated by the National Historic Register as a contributing building. That's a fact. That's, that's not to be disputed. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's something else. So I, I believe that we should not be dealing with this until we get... Uh, a plan that is uh, what's required under the ordinance. That's another another thing right there. Thank you, um, Commissioner Hanna. Thanks, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> I guess barring a actual physical plan, I mean, I don't know what it would. What it would show us, uh, I think what we're acting upon is that it will be turned to turf. Um, that is the plan that we're acting on. And if, if I understand it correctly, if they do want to make any alterations that, you know, it would have to come back to planning commission in the future. So I do feel like we are acting on a plan um, set forth. Um, in, in regards to ordinance, I know there's been a lot of discussion on the council level. Um, about changing ordinances and um, you know adjusting things and there's a moratorium on demolition but um, you know there's also a reference in here that when the application was submitted that I only think it's fair to be treated under the same ordinances when it was submitted uh, it's, I don't think it's ethically right to apply it now uh, as you know these homeowners have uh, submitted all the materials gone through everything that we've laid out as a city prior uh, and then in the middle of the process um, pull the rug out from underneath them and say hey well actually you need to do this this and this and this um, because they, they even went to the state historical society said we're going to dem do this demolition we want to apply for the demolition and, and, and got approval um, the landmarks commission did not have it designated as a local landmark um, and I feel like at this point uh, it sounds kind of like a scramble to me to save a building that was not recognized until someone wanted to do something with it. Um, and to then change the rules after the submission um, does not seem right. Uh, it doesn't sound ethical at all. Um, so I want to make a motion for approval uh, of this. Um, and I could go through what I think uh, as far as how it you know applies to the uh, comprehensive plan um, and as far as having uh, cohesive um, you know aesthetics 
uh, all the other buildings downtown um, serve as commercial buildings. This is the only residential one, so I don't see any uh, cohesiveness. It is the only stick-built one, uh, I think, within uh, those blocks. Um, and that architecture seems to be the only historical uh, reference for this building. Um, I feel like uh, as far as the open space plan, uh, uh, it does provide an acceptable land use at this point. Um, I feel like something that is not uh, provided downtown is green space. Uh, I feel like it could enhance the downtown by having green space. Uh, I'll take a few examples. I was in Lake Mills downtown um, a month or two ago, and they have a beautiful green space downtown that was very active, and their downtown was alive. Um, I feel like as far as comprehensive planning, I uh, agree with one of the responses in from the Kittlesons that uh, I see that this property would be part of a future larger development that could still be uh, have a historical aesthetic in nature. Um, I find that uh, the building itself uh, proves to be very difficult um, to find another use, uh, and there hasn't been anything suggested as far as a potential future use. Uh, so I it would leave another open storefront, if you may, uh, that's been referenced in the past about downtown. Um, and then as far as uh, yeah, I, yeah, as far as number two under F, um, it's not, I already stated it's not practical given the nature of the building. Uh, you cannot have residential first floor uses. Um, economic revitalization, I feel like the building would advance uh, as it's setting forth um, a future vision. Uh, for downtown development um, as part of a comprehensive plan. Um, I could see it being a larger development, um, and I think it would uh, advance open space plan um, and I think attract more people downtown and keep people downtown for a longer period of time um, to reference you know, the survey. Uh, that has been referenced in the past about why people want to be in Stoughton because it's historic. In that survey, people also responded they'd like to see more green space. And when reference to uh, the larger uh, development on the riverfront, that was the number one. And very strongly um, response was green space. And so I think that is a statement in itself that the community would like to see more green space. And it is something that we do not have uh, downtown. So for those reasons, I would uh, make a motion for approval of this demolition. There's a motion by Hannah. Is there a second? Second. Second by Maloney. So it's further discussion. Um, I know that um, Susan Schuster would like to make a comment. If you'd like to come up to the, to the podium, please. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Just a citizen, um, a homeowner, but Mr. Hanna, don't you own the property next to this building? I do not. No, the Kittlesons do. The Kittlesons own this building. Yes, that's correct. But don't you own property next to it, near it? I do not own that no. property. Okay. The Kittlesons do. The Kittlesons own the property next to this building, which they also own. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Since when did green space become a priority in the Stoughton downtown area, across from the public library, on the corner, I mean the address is Main Street. You don't get any more authentic, historic than that. Mm -hmm. I also heard that it was going to be paved uh, no. instead of the green space that it was going to be made into a parking lot. No, the proposal as we see it in our, in our packet and in our materials this evening talk about green space, which is um, um, planting it with grass at this point. What Mr. Hanna is, re is referring to is um, 
the community surveys and the survey with the comprehensive plan, right. that a majority of those respondents um, noted that they would like to see more green space. But were they given the, the opportunity to say, at this address, would you like to see green space or see this so, historic building at 315 <coughs> torn down? Were they given that choice? I, I don't, don't think, think so. Well, no, that wasn't so. specifically this identified. This is sort of yep. sneaky. Something's just yeah. not right here. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, I know that the that when you're finished, I know there are others that would like to speak as well. <clears throat> so you're willing to demolish it, it, what it comes down to is the the right of the owner to do with what they want with that property because they own it. True. Or the interest of the community does that in a historic building, which is, you're weighing this, is that correct? That's what the commissioners are discussing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever heard of eminent domain? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just don't see why you would destroy a building like this or allow it to be turned, I don't care what you turn it into. And it was, you were mistaken. It was a, a commercial building. The, there were attorney's offices in there. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a residential building. It, 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 it could have be used for a hundred different things. Okay, thank you. I know that we have others that are wishing to speak if you're, if you're done. I know that, um, and I can't remember his name. I apologize, Colton Kittleson, thank you. Alrighty. Yeah, actually, as a citizen, if I would have gotten a survey, I would have voted for green space, you know, uh, something where if I had children, you know, down the road that I could take them to, um, you know, my own girlfriend and I at some point would probably like to have children. Her hometown, uh, right on the main street, has little areas. There's a gazebo. Um, there's benches on the grass that you can sit and read next to a library. You know, I, th I find that an amazing idea. Um, same thing with Lake Mills. They have a, a pretty robust downtown with green space that people, after shopping, um, you know, going to their libraries, you know, checking out a book, where, would, where, where could they sit? They could go sit on a lovely little bench. You know, same thing if we had a, a spot open for the parade. You know, we boast our amazing set in my parade that I've been proud to see every year. And, uh, you know, people would like places to sit and enjoy it. And I think that's an important aspect of a town. You know, I would have pride, you know, having a town and for, you know, a lack of something. I, I don't see it right now, you know, so. And I do find if the uh, the building has been for sale for, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, council, before it was purchased uh, a number of years, well, you know, why wasn't it done? You know, why wasn't anything if it was, supposedly a landmark building and the commission's saying, you know, it's, it's you know, why, why didn't they purchase it? Why didn't somebody on their commission purchase it being they, they run that, you know, they run that committee, they should have known. And they, you know, so thank you, you know, thank you. Mayor Olson. And I know there's a gentleman here if you'd like to come up and come to the podium, please, and let us know your name and address. I haven't signed up in advance. Okay. Nope, that's fine. Nope. Uh, good evening. My name is Todd Barman. Uh, my residential address is 308 South Monroe Street. I've lived in Stoughton for about 12 years, 13 years now. Um, and I'm actually here on the agenda for um, the last item on the agenda because I own 603 West Main Street with my wife. It's the old Sicko Food Mart. Um, but I, I just I wanted to at least put a couple things on the table because of my experience. <clears throat> Not only the experience I have here in Stoughton in that when my wife and I purchased that particular property, we were actually looking for other properties to purchase. And one of the buildings that we looked at was that particular house um, as an opportunity for retail. And we, had, we chose the gas station because it's right next to, to our residence. And so we, we saw the potential in that building. Um, but I'll be honest with you, if, if and when the building has been for sale, it has not been very clearly for sale to the public because we would watch it. But I also wanted to step up to the podium because of my experience professionally. I have <clears throat> worked in historic preservation um, for the entirety of my professional career. I was with the um, National Main Street Center for about eight years. I was with the Wisconsin Main Street Program for about six years. 
Um, I'm currently an economic development consultant specializing in historic commercial districts, working with Main Street communities across the United States and up into Canada. And so I just want to chime in a little bit on historic preservation and economic development. <clears throat> and when you look at green space, and when you look at surveys that are done by communities, gauging public interest in green space within the community, it's one thing to say we want more green space. And it's another to be evaluating where that green space is most appropriate. And there's green space within neighborhoods, there's green space within side streets. Um, research shows that green space along Main Street is not good economic development. When you have green space within a historic commercial district, particularly along the main drag where you typically have storefronts, um, there's a lot of research out there, and I can provide it to the, the Planning Commission if you're interested in it, that those spaces become opportunities for interruption of the strolling commercial traffic. It's places where the strolling shopper who's walking up and down Main Street will stop and turn around and go back to their car because you're typically not programming those spaces. They become dead spaces. Now, when there's a festival or an event where there's a an organization like a Chamber of Commerce that has um, planned or scripted some sort of event in those spaces, they can be very, very vibrant at particular times. But for the majority of the week, the majority of the time, they become dead spaces that will actually interrupt commercial traffic. And you'll see within the district where people will walk and stroll, they might get all the way up to the library and they will look and they will see that space that is not programmed and it's not active and they'll turn around and start walking the other way and i'll see this in districts across the country that i work with and so i think you have to understand that while a community may say that they're interested in green space you have to really evaluate from a planning commission perspective from a municipal perspective where those spaces are and i also just want to say that when we look at um, the <clears throat> appropriateness of a residential building that building was built as a residence and is not uncommon within historic commercial districts, particularly as you start to get to the fringes of those districts, that you'd have historic houses. And those houses are appropriate. Even though it's not masonry, even though it's not a zero setback, um, traditional commercial two-story storefront, that was an appropriate development within the history and the development pattern within Stoughton, historically. I mean, because it's there. Okay, it's not like we're asking to build that house there now based on the current comp plan and the current zoning codes. I mean, I would never recommend that you build that house there now. But the fact is that it is appropriate and it is historic, and there are a lot of uses for it. Um, typically, what we see within historic commercial districts that I work with is that you'll see an art-type business, um, some kind of retail, that will be more of a destination retail kind of business because it doesn't have a, a very strong window display um, uh, the, uh, area that will draw people off the traffic. So it tends to need to be more of a destinations type business. So you'll see art businesses in there. Um, my wife and I were looking at, you know, like a, you'll see Christmas, the, 20, the 365 day a year Christmas store kind of, of opportunities within those kinds of spaces. And so I think as you weigh this as a plan commission, I mean, I would look at, if we're really looking at economic development, um, look at the fact that when you create that turf, an unprogrammed turf is really going to negatively impact the downtown from an economic development perspective, plus you're losing that historic resource. And again, I, I feel a little bit challenged because I've never been inside the building. So I can't speak to condition. I can't speak to how much money it's going to take to, to bring that building back. But I have seen buildings and districts that I work in that are um, much more deteriorated than that that are brought back and become um, vital parts of the commercial district. So thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, not, please, let's, yes, let's stay ordered. One more comment, then I'd like to get back to the commissioner's discussion and the resolution. Mm -hmm. So. I'm sorry that you didn't know it was for sale, but it was for sale for many years. There was a for sale sign in front of the building by the blue and white sign. Forgive me, I don't know. Um, secondly, it can't be residential. So it can, it can be a wonderful old home, um, but it can't be that. Thirdly, 
we're not going to develop it into anything if it can't be removed. So I have multiple pictures of it with me tonight, if you'd like, um, on the thing, the tablet, if you'd like to take a look at how, uh, um, what the condition is. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you want to do that or if it matters or we do have if it some takes in our up packet too much this time. Pardon I'm me? sorry, Amy, but we do have, we do have some in our packet some, tonight, so I think we've... Okay. Um, commissioners have had a look on the inside. <coughs> okay. So, okay. Thank you. And you've got more if you'd like, if the commissioners would like them. Thank you. Uh, for the commissioner's discussion, though, I'd like to guide us back. We have a motion on the floor. I'd like to guide us back to that resolution. Um, and Ronnie can put it up if that helps to focus the conversation. And maybe, Laura, you can help us walk through the resolution to help answer some of those questions we have out there. Um, sure. So, um, starting with um, paragraph E of the recitals, um, the, the recital contemplates that the uh, plan commission will make a finding that preserving the building either is or is not important to preserve the aesthetic or other qualities of the district based on the following qualities. And again, the form provides an option that contributes to or detract from the historical and visual character of the district. So that's the first one, and I, I'm, I, um, I'm uh, contemplating that according to Mr. Hanna's uh, motion, that I'm not going to put words in your mouth. Why don't you walk us through this one? Well, sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I definitely could. Honestly, I think this one's a tough question because there's pros and cons to both, right? Um, and you could you could argue it either way. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of these can, can be conflicting. Um, I guess in that sense, I think there is potential to preserve aesthetic uh, qualities and architectural qualities. Um, but at this point, um, you know, it is not contributing to the downtown aesthetic. Um, there is no clear future for it to ever be revitalized um, in the near future. Um, I haven't heard anything as far as, um, you know, any, anything specific about the architecture that makes it, um, you know, anything that really stands out that needs to be uh, preserved. Um, so, you know, that, that's why I asked for the clarification earlier. These aren't required, but they're suggested. Um, I think the way I would answer this is looking at more of uh, long-term development of this site, whether or not um, it's demolished or saved. Um, honestly, I would like to see action taken with this building. So I don't know how you want me to answer that each question specifically, um, but you know, it, yeah, there are certainly qualities. I think there's, you know, you could find qualities to anything and it's, um, you know, to save it, but, um, you know, is it, is it contributing to the downtown mm -hmm. visual character of the district currently? No, it's, it, it's, it's detracts from it visually. I think it looks, uh, very poor for the city, uh, have a, a building downtown that is, has holes through the wall, um, yeah. that has, you know, a roof that is about to cave in. I don't think it's safe. So at this point, I think, uh, demolition, um, makes sense, um, because there is no future for this building, uh, in, in the immediate future or the long-term future. So is that good for the city and economic development? No. Um, the proposed open space, I guess, uh, from one of the uh, people who came up and commented, uh, I think I could find uh, lots of research um, in my field of landscape architecture that says green space downtown and public spaces provides, 
you know, adds to the health and, um, you know, overall uh, downtown space. It can keep people downtown in spaces. Uh, so I would uh, argue against that, that you could find, you know, documentation and research that says the opposite. Um, so I think that uh, if you're looking at the current snapshot, the proposed open space plan for the property contributes to the visual quality of the district by adding green and it's not uh, all hard space. <coughs> we can, I can keep Thank going you. on to F I'm if you want. Are there other commissioners that would like to speak to this uh, while we're still on number one and two of E? Alderperson Engelberger. One or two of E. We're looking at our resolution and these are the the items that the attorneys okay. have to well, determine yeah, are let me, important. Let me just mention you. a couple things here. I, you know, I, I, I like to listen to the professionals when I'm dealing with this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, we just heard from one a short time ago. Uh, we heard very similar uh, statements from, from our landmarks chair, Peggy, who works for the uh, state, Wisconsin State Historical Society in preserving. Uh, uh, historic buildings in districts and uh, you know one of the things that the point was made when you have holes in a main street of a historic district district it detracts from the historic district and I mean these these are professionals telling us this um, let me give you a little summary of uh, this particular building that was designated in, it was listed as a national register in 1994. State uh, register listing was 1993. Uh, this property is, uh, it was built in 1884, uh, surveyed in 1990, 2003 and 2013. Uh, historic use as, as a boarding house. Uh, the architectural style is Italianate. Uh, these are all things that contribute to uh, his, its historic nature in, in this historic district. On the, on the back side and on their website of the Wisconsin State Historical Society, there's another five or six paragraphs regarding this particular property. I'll show it to Scott and you can pass it around if you'd like. Uh, you know, this, these are, this is serious business. This isn't, uh, you know, opinions on, I think it should be torn down because people should be able to do anything they want with their buildings. Obviously, you can't do anything you want with your buildings because we have ordinances that prevent that kind of thing. So um, I'll have more to say later. Okay, thank you. Laura, is it your best opinion that we we continue? I think we've got the the guidelines. I'd like us. I'd like the council to continue here a little bit, and then I recognize that you'd like to say something. Well, the the second factor focuses on um, the land use and whether the um, demolition and the plan to um, convert the to to grade the site and seed the site. Um, either does or does not provide an acceptable land use, at least until a new structure is constructed on the property. And then that second part of that um, factor considers whether preserving the building, again, is or is not practicable given the nature of the building and the legally and practically available uses of the, of the building. Thank you. Any comments regarding this section of the resolution? If not, we'll go on to the next one, if you would, please. The economic revitalization factor um, asks the commission to consider whether removing the building and um, um, seating the site uh, would advance or would interfere with economic revitalization of the district. Okay, comments or thoughts? I know we've had a couple of different comments on that one. Um, older person Maloney. Older person. You've become an older person, Michael. <coughs> welcome, welcome. Sure How about Commissioner Maloney? Thank you. Mayor. 
I, I guess that that's my uh, number one reason to support the demolition is that we're putting in I guess regulation changes currently and there's no um, certainty uh, for the redevelopment when uh, a building that <clears throat> I consider unsafe as an engineer uh, close to the sidewalks is is being maintained if you're if you're waiting for the perfect plan to come along and not allowing any type of certainty for redevelopment um, it will never happen thank you any further comments Commissioner Truel you look like you have something to say not yet not yet okay Commissioner Engelberger. Thank you, Your Honor. I still haven't heard from the attorney why uh, this wouldn't go to the uh, council for a final decision as it states under our current ordinance. Well, I, I guess. With the um, CUP procedure. I, all I can do is refer you to the opinion that um, uh, Mr. Dragney gave on January 20th uh, that uh, contains, sets forth his analysis um, that. Um, and his statutory interpretation and his conclusion that demolition um, is allowable if it's approved by the plan, plan commission under section 78-913 sub 3 and sub 4. Still haven't heard a reason. Um, I, I believe we would be uh, violating the constitution of the state if we did this um, i just want to say another thing about you know people were talking about uh, open spaces that's great you know we, we talk about open spaces all the time with our parks and and uh, we continually uh, look for more open space within our comprehensive plan in our city for planning obviously um, main street is not the place for it as we've heard from professionals um, and, and besides that, I don't believe it's even allowable under our comprehensive plan. Where does it say in our comprehensive plan we can have a, a private public park in our, in our downtown historic district? Where does it say that? Rodney, can you point me to that? Not to that phrase. I mean, I, I don't know how doesn't that... doesn't say it's not allowable, doesn't say it's allowable, yeah. that particular phrase. Okay. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, I think it's important that we go through the rest of the points in the resolution and then we can have a, a more a general conversation. Again, we need to act on and there's a motion on the floor and I know we have another a comment from from folks that are here. So, Laura, if you well, we're down to recital um, H, which um, uh, is the ultimate question on the um, factors and that asks the Commission to find that uh, demolition of the building and conversion of the property to open grass space either is or is not in compliance with sound aesthetic land use site design and economic revitalization practices and that really is what our motion will address once we get to the motion so I talks about I is the ultimate um, question on um, whether to oh yeah no I'm sorry I is relates to the comprehensive plan um, consistency factor whether demolition um, and conversion is consistent with the comprehensive plan okay, thank you Rodney any comments for the the commissioners or your overall uh, all, all I was going to highlight is on the screen um, the question has been raised about the interpretation by the city attorney um, uh, about whether what prevails what sections of the ordinance this is a segment of his uh, his memo that was provided in the packet um, so the commissioners and public can read this or review it or contemplate it but this is the section that's been re referenced a number of times related to his opinion okay, thank you I know we have one more comment from the um, the audience and then I'd like to go to we do have a motion on the floor so mrs. Schuster 
just bend your ear. Um, but I just don't like what I'm hearing. Um, as far as this building was built in 1884, is that correct? Michael has yep. the, the data on that. Mm -hmm. So by my math, which is not so great, I think it's 133 years old. How many of us will be around in 133 years? Okay, I think we all know the answer to that one. Yep. It's not really a laughing matter. I, I don't mean to be laughing, but um, it's a it's question that we know the It's not a joking matter. What, I'm tr what the city has wanted to do is pass on some historic legacy. Absolutely, it's valuable and to us. And as far as green space, what do you call the five blocks down? What do you call that park by the river where everyone fishes, plays baseball, the fairs down there, you have coffee festival? Isn't that green space? Mm -hmm. Five blocks away. It's not on Main Street. It's not on the corner, not across from the public library. It's beautiful. That's green space. This would not be green space. This building is 133 years old. 133 years ago, there was no word like green space. But this, the, I suppose there was a city council, I don't know, but the city was here. Yep. That's what I'm asking you to consider. This is not to be taken lightly. This is not just a little thing on the agenda. Um, this really matters. And to rely on a one-sided survey, that's, I just don't understand that. If, if the, I never got a survey. And if the survey said, would you like green space? I would have said, yeah. But if it was accurate and said, would you, at that location, would you rather have green space or uh, have that building restored or have the building not demolished, that would have been a real choice. That would have been an accurate choice. If you're sending out a one-sided survey, you're getting one-sided information, true? Thank you. Just so you know, we don't take this decision lightly either. Well, this you were smiling at me. You were laughing when I said 133 years old. Right. I smiled I'm not because laughing. I thought I'm really upset. Okay, I'd like you to be respectful. I smiled because I thought, are any of us going to live 130 years? Well, that makes all of us I wasn't smile joking, a little. Your Honor. With respect, I wasn't joking. Okay, with all due respect, how I serious this is. I apologize. Thank I thought you. that was a facetious Thank question. You. No, it wasn't all not going to be I'm not all trying right. to be snotty. Further I'm comments, further comments that you, further comments that you'd like to share with our commission before we move forward. Pardon me. Further comments you'd like to share with our commission before we move forward. Don't don't make a mistake. Don't waste this. Thank you. you. Have this one, you know, one chance, and after tonight, I understand it'll go to another meeting for another vote. Is that right? No. No. Oh, this is it. That's my understanding, yes. This is it tonight. Yes, that's correct. Deal or no deal? Well, the commissioners will discuss how they wish to move forward. Right. Right. Alder person here, isn't he a, Mr. a Kittleson? I'm sorry, Alder person Johnson would like to speak as well. So if you'd have He's a couple a more seconds, a couple more minutes to finish up, and then Alder person Johnson would like to All speak. Right. blow this. You have this one opportunity. I guess it comes around once every 133 years. Thank you. Alderperson Johnson. Thank you, Your Honor and Commissioners. Um, I was at the council meeting with uh, when the attorney, Dregney, was speaking, and he did say there was a conflict within the statues, and that's why we're bringing this all up. Um, and second, um, I would hope that this goes to the city council because we are voted to represent the constituents. We're not nominated or put on the board. So I think this is a really big issue that I think it should go to the council and we should be able to, I, I would hope that you guys would table this until we can get this situation worked out. Also, as far as it being a public land park, I think we're gonna be getting into um, issues as far as any, if anything happens on the land. 
with individuals. It's not city, but it's public. I mean, how much are we going to want to be involved with a public land that's a park? Um, and also, another thing that I would love this to go to council is, and not have it just be the planning commission, is because the person that owns this is actually on the city council. And I would think if we don't cover all our bases and make sure that we follow all the statutes as Attorney Dregney brought up points on, it might look like we're favoring our own. So I, I just think we should bring it to the council so it's all clean and a, above board and that other constituents can weigh in on it. So thank you, Your Honor, and thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Alderperson Engelberger. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, you know, I think this is a really important thing, and uh, to my knowledge, we haven't discussed as a plan commission or as a council um, anything regarding a, a private public area within our city. I think that deserves some discussion if we're going to make some decisions here on something like this. The other thing is when, when this building is tore down, what you're going to see from Main Street is the side of the house behind this house, which is, you know, you got a gas meter and other, other things. What you're going to see from 4th Street is an unfinished side of a building uh, that's owned by the current owner uh, of, this, uh, of this proposal. And uh, have we discussed anything regarding um, finished uh, uh, finishes on, a, on the side of a building when, when it's actually seen from the street? Uh, I know we do have some things about that in our ordinances, but we certainly haven't discussed that here today. Uh, that might be something we want to consider. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of different uh, things regarding this uh, that, to my, in my opinion, it's, this is premature. We should be dealing with all of these issues, and we ha just haven't been. So. Thank you. Commissioner Hanna. Sure. Thanks. Um, I think in regards to the public-private park, um, I don't see anywhere in here that it states that it's going to be public, so I could see that it will be the same as a privately owned owned property. Um, and if the owners invite people to enter the property, then it's then it's their choice. I don't. It's not going to be owned by the city, so I don't see how the city should have any sort of jurisdiction or control over uh, private public park, and they've never entered into negotiations to have a partnership about it. So. I don't see where we have the authority. Um, as far as sending it to to the council, um, I reference what I started with. I, I feel like, you know, when this uh, proposal was submitted, uh, and you could see in the timeline when it was, um, they followed every single rule, uh, put together uh, additional items as requested, uh, understanding that they would be I guess uh, assessed under the current rules and so to go through and and change the rules and uh, adjust things and make them go above and beyond uh, to me isn't very ethical um, because uh, it, it every everything was in place I feel like we are following the rules the attorney has made a ruling and so then to again supersede the attorney after we've already asked him to make a opinion on it to me tells me that we're not following the professionals um, so I'm going to follow the professional and respect the decision by the attorney and I say that we need to act on this tonight and I don't I don't see that there are any other issues as far as visually um, <coughs> the building uh, I don't see that the current owner of uh, the adjacent property who owns this property uh, it's not in their nature to have a an ugly facade either I don't think that's in their nature uh, and then the residential property next door um, to me is in the same uh, condition as as this property is as it's you know detracting from the visual quality of the district um, I, I, I you know I, I still feel the same way and I, I think we need to treat this with uh, the facts that are here because I I really do think that they are here so thank you Mr. Truel thank you your honor I think that's that's really where I have been struggling with this since uh, it first came uh, before us and and in and, and, uh, 
not only at the plan commission, but then how it's, it has morphed at the, at the council level. Um, for me, I think it's, it's a couple things, and, and Matt hit on a, on, on a couple of them. I think um, clearly the attorney has, city attorney has, has told us that we, uh, notwithstanding the other actions that are currently going on uh, at the council and trying to look at um, improving our process going forward, um, I think we, the uh, attorney Dragney has, has made it pretty clear that um, this, uh, this uh, request should be taken up based on uh, the ordinances and the interpretations um, at the time they submitted it. So I think it's, it's uh, to Mike's concern about um, process, <coughs> I, 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 for me that one ends up being pretty straightforward. Um, they have a, we have a legitimate request that came before us um, and, and uh, as such we need to, to ultimately act on it either for or against it. Um, but I think my, my, my challenge with this has been, again, if we talk about um, what was before us this evening in terms of uh, a, a, Attorney Dragney and, and, and the responses, um, the real question has, for me has always been what's the actual use? Um, because again, in Attorney Dragney's um, uh, letter um, to the property owner, um, he specifically says we're looking for a clear description of the proposed appearance of the property, a detailed landscape plan and the like. And what we've been presented, at least, at least what I've seen, is, is conceptual. And, and the follow-up response is um, to grade and plant grass. Um, we've submitted a previously a, a conceptual um, plan, um, but it then indicates that you know, we'll work with other people to determine what we do in the future and the like. A and candidly, that's been my concern with this. Um, all old buildings aren't necessarily historic. Um, this one has a has a interesting history, um, and I and I I wish um, that perhaps folks would have been made aware, um, or or if it, if it was uh, uh, has been on the market for an extended period of time, if if someone had a creative use reuse for the building, that would have been awesome. Um, I think uh, from my sense, um, this this building I've seen the building decay. Um, on some level, I, I, to, to Mike's comment again about what the next door neighbor looks like and things, you know, I don't know if this should have been something that we should have been following up, staff should have been following up and, and as it was running down a little bit, um, perhaps following up and trying to see if we could improve it or keep it in some shape. Um, it's to a point right now where I don't know, you know, what <coughs> the best use of that building is um, for me personally. Um, but like I said, where, as I sit here tonight and, and, and Get ready to vote on this. I'm still struggling with with if if the action is to move forward and to take the building down. I don't know what's going to be left there. I don't know what's coming back, um, and and that's really um, again with regard to, to the specific response that we got back. Um, I, I struggle with that um, because if I if I knew that there was a, a better use. And again, not not. Uh, I, I do understand um, uh, the historic nature of the buildings and things. Um, again, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, I'm a contractor. Um, we do uh, historic renovation, amongst other things. So I, I, I certainly have a feel for it. Um, but, I, but as I see here today, I guess part of my, my question is, it's okay. To, to my friend Mike's comment, you know, once we take the action, it's done. And, and I guess the second part of that for me is, then what? What, what is really going to end up there? Um, and I was struggling um, on this public-private element here too. Um, the concept plan that we have before us um, looks like an attractive um, uh, park area that could, we could find in other areas of the city and other things, but I just, I guess I'm struggling a little bit to try and figure out whether it was truly the intent of the, of the owners that if they do this, um, are they proposing that this will be a public park? Um, and, and if, if that's the case, is it your intent to turn around and donate it to the city so it is in fact a public park? Or are you truly willing to take, you know, is it gonna be open for the community? And if it is, are you willing to take the responsibility that comes with that? And that's a real challenge. Um, but not only responsibility, but the liability. So um, for me, that's, that's really been my, my struggle. Uh, even, and it hasn't gotten any clearer tonight. Um, I, I, I think, it, as I said, it's, it's caused us to, as a council to take a look at uh, our overall policies about how we're going to handle um, uh, demolition requests in the future. Um, and I, I just, 
you know, we, we do have to take it very seriously. Um, and, and I guess um, to that point, I would ask if the owner would like to, to respond. I, I would like to, again, find out what your intent is. So, um, I forgot. Oh, so we had a conceptual plan for garden space, just not to garden, not vegetables, just a garden space. Um, Attorney Dragney sent me an email and said he wanted to know, and perhaps that's the ordinance, very specifically, yes. the species and, and, um, and, and I was taken off guard because it was a Friday afternoon, and I said, well, I don't know that. I mean, I can honestly tell you right now, I don't know that. I, don't, I have no idea what I would plant there. Um, and he, the part that got me was it was binding. Whatever I brought forth was binding as far as plant species and trees and height and all this. And so I said, well, I don't know. I don't know. So if we remove the building, planted grass, and then, I mean, I would come and ask, can I, you know, uh, we're not willy-nilly. We weren't just going to do whatever we want because it is private property, even though a portion of me felt like I could, but that's not, that's not the way we operate. And like I said in the lengthy email to, and maybe you weren't on that, on that, I don't know, but, um, you know, all we wanted was the city's blessing. And now we're not, you know, my husband was born and raised here, was born in Stoughton Hospital. So, you know, I understand the historic part. I, just, I understand keeping wonderful old buildings. And I don't want to, I'm not going to stand up here and read this whole thing again. But our intention wasn't just to go tearing down old buildings or historic property. Um, we just wanted to remove the building that's been for sale for a very long time and prior to it being for sale was not kept up. Um, and I do take a little bit of offense to the fact that the half finished building next to said property um, because he's put a new roof on that said adjacent property, Mike, and um, he has repaired all the cracks. He's replaced the windows. We've gutted the upstairs twice. So I do take offense to that, I'm sorry. Um, but all we wanted to do was make it a nice space. And as far as, far as public, private, I didn't know that it was, um, we just wanted a place for people if they choose to. You don't have to come if you don't want to. You don't have to walk by, you don't have to come there. But if you choose to, great. As far as liabilities, of course we would take responsibility. I don't know what to say. It's all we wanted was just a nice place because it's not, it, it might be repairable for somebody that has an endless money, but we don't. So it, it, the way we obtained it is the way it's going to stay if it's not removed. And that, I, I'm sorry to say that, but it's, it's not going to be this, it's not going to be from 1800 not going to and it and frankly the stuff inside it's not like it's all the same stuff that was there when it was first built I mean it's been painted and you know renoed inside and and whatnot so did that answer your question no Mostly. I mean and, I and, the and, reason and, I didn't I had great I have grand plans are you kidding me but I I can't when someone tells me it's binding I was like oh well I'm not certain about that and, and our challenge um, ma'am is is <clears throat> any of the commercial properties, anybody else that brings something yeah. to us and, and comes into plan, one of the items that we'll take up is a site plan. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll, we'll unfortunately or fortunately go through and talk about the landscape and setbacks and things. And, and to the folks that, that um, would speak against taking down the building, they would also offer the fact that once we say yes, that's also binding too. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's where for me, again, trying to understand um, what might be coming back afterwards um, is important uh, as a part of it because it's a, it's it is a it's it's a very important corner and and uh, um, so we appreciate you know any imp input you can bring. I have a question for me. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Michael had 
Okay. Do you mind, Michael? That's fine. Okay, yeah. sure. Okay, I, Commissioner I, Maloney. Amy, I think yeah. Commissioner Maloney has a question. I had a question, question for you as well. Um, next to the um, city of Middleton City Hall, they took down a two-story brick building that uh, the city bought the lot, and that's for future expansion into a for more parking. Um, it's currently sitting in grass until that happens. I may have assumed that you were planning something for redevelopment here, and I guess I question once you get this building down and it's put to grass, is your plan to combine anything or put, put this lot for sale for redevelopment, or is it to leave it as an open space like this? It's not for redevelopment and it's not for, someone had mentioned paving, no because you have to come in to you have to come into the adjacent parking lot to get to it there's no way to get to it as far as on a in a vehicle and no we don't want to redevelop it we don't want to develop it or i don't even know what that means other than build a building or no no that's not my intention at all not, and it never has been and if it would be we'd have to come <coughs> ask you anyway yeah. you know correct thank you so thank you further questions for amy Okay, thank you. Yeah. Alderperson Engelberger. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I've stated to Dennis and Amy in the past, uh, this isn't personal between me and them. I, re I represent the constituents in this city, and I represent people that are into historic preserva uh, preservation in our very historic town. Um, you know, Alder uh, Chul here, uh, Scott, yeah, Scott. Alder Truel, I mean, he stated a lot of concerns here, and I agree with him. Um, you know, what we, we haven't talked about, uh, you know, how a private uh, park affects the city at all. Those are things we should discuss. Um, pointed out the, uh, right in uh, the attorney's letter with regard to a requirement that there be a plan, not just a conceptual plan, not just a verbal plan, a plan. If we take action on this tonight, my opinion is we are violating our ordinances as a plan commission. What, what is the difference if we take a little more time here? I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the Kittleson's plans are, but um, you know, if it happens now or four months from now or three months from now, uh, we, we want to get the process right here. We don't want to be violating our own ordinances as a commission. We want to be doing things right. And in my opinion, that's why we need to either not take action tonight or deny it or whatever. Thank you. For the comments before we take a vote, there is a motion on the floor. Alderperson Jensen. Question for the attorney. Would we be violating our ordinances? In our opinion, no. Thank you. Thank you. I, I see older person Borsma would like to make a, a comment before we move forward with the Thank vote. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Um, so I represent District 1 as an alder, and I have not weighed in on this until now, I guess. Um, but uh, I'm on a number of committees, uh, uh, and th that includes Public Works and tree commission and a number of committees what we how we typically do it is um, you can have a controversial issue on a committee level and uh, it's referred to the city council with a vote um, but taken by the uh, commission or committee and then um, the people who represent the citizens of Stoughton um, vote on uh, an issue especially as serious as this one. This one is, has a lot of controversy and I, I think that in this particular area, especially with conflicting ordinances, which I think we do have, because I've read them, um, and, I've, and uh, the, uh, our attorney has outlined them, um, I think that the proper thing is that the city council people make a decision based on a recommendation of the committee. Now, I understand that uh, our attorney, Dregney, doesn't think that that's 
the proper way of doing it. But I, I really think that um, rather than having the, the full weight of this vote go to this committee, um, I, th I think it'd be better that it goes to council. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is because I think I, I greatly respect um, uh, the dilemma uh, and the hard work that this um, um, this particular uh, group has to has to do on a week uh, monthly basis at least and um, but I think that ultimately it boils down to the fact that I think that the the council needs to make a decision on this one um, and I don't know how I don't know how that might be possible for uh, for your um, your committee to refer. I would like to have a in, when I'm sitting at that seat. I would like to have um, uh, planning tell me what they think. But I would also, um, based on the fact that I've taken an oath to to do the right thing and to make the make decisions uh, actually for my constituents both at the city level and in my district, um, I think it, um, I, I think we should do it. Not that I really want to, because this is such a controversial issue. Um, I have been sitting through um, at least three of these, um, and part of what I keep telling myself is I'm glad I don't have to make that, this decision, but um, that's kind of the chicken way out. Um, and I and I think that the city council really should make a decision on this. So that's my that's my point tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Engelberg. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I want to make two points. Uh, first of all, I want to tell Amy and Dennis that my comments regarding looking at the side of the buildings of the house and your business are not meant to say uh, any. They're not cutting your your business down. What I was talking about was, has this commission considered having an open space on the side of a building requiring it to be the same as a finished face on a building, which is discussed in our ordinances in some places, but this council or this uh, plan commission has not discussed that. That's another area where there should be some discussion as opposed to just go ahead and do it, you know, do ahead and pass something. And I would make a motion to table this at this time. Is there a second on the motion to table? The motion to table fails due to a lack of a second. Alderperson Truel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Matt, would you consider an amendment um, to your motion um, um, wherein prior to, assuming your, your, your motion to, to demo is, is approved? Um, that, that prior to the actual demo permit being issued, that the applicant would be required to bring, to, to submit a, a final plan? Yeah, I would, I, I would be uh, in favor of that. Um, I would like to, yeah, I think that we would have more answers, um, but I'd like to see this be approved tonight, uh, again, for the ethical reasons that I've stated. Um, I would hate to see this uh, slip and then, um, you know, be applied under new rules. Um, again, I don't, I don't think that is fair or ethical. So I would, I would agree to that. That uh, uh, if approved um, before the permit is issued, uh, uh, site plan uh, approval um, would be need to be final site plan approval would need to be submitted. Our site plan, is that? Yeah, I guess that's where, it, where from, from my standpoint, again, that's, it, I, I think, you know, for me personally, again, I, I think there's been a miss, uh, I, I don't think we've had great communication back and forth in terms of what, to, to uh, Mike's comment, again, about following the process. Um, you know, specifically in the letter uh, from the city attorney, it talks about needing a clear description, you know, proposed materials, everything else. Um, as as uh, Amy had indicated, you know, she, was given the opportunity and and basically came back and said you know didn't have a plan at this point and 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 again realizing that anything was going to be submitted was going to need to be binding um, 
I, I think it is important for us to know if if your motion is successful to, to know what what's going to what's going to happen there so yeah I, I think that uh, that's certainly realistic as um, this wasn't originally stated to them when they submitted the permit but in the process of the permit uh, within a recent uh, in the recent past noted that hey you also need these additional materials um, I think it'd only be fair to give them time to uh, consider those uh, plans so I would say yeah if I don't know if we want to state it as um, either way I, I would I would I would move move that as an amendment to the to to the motion uh, that that uh, pri that should the motion be successful that prior to the actual uh, awarding of, of the demolition permit a final site plan um, would need to be submitted uh, to city uh, and from a standpoint of, of staff review um, Rodney Mike you know would, would that is that something you would want to see I do you want it back here come back to us I'm asking that. sure yeah so that'll be that's my motion okay so I have a, a, a motion to amend is there a second second and I know, Michael, you had your hand. Uh, so just a question, and I, I think we answered it, but it's going to become then a, a two-step process. So it's kind of like approval to dem demo, approval for site plan. Correct. Okay. okay. Commissioner Jensen? I was wondering if uh, Amy had any comment on that. That's fine. Is that fine with you? Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Um, <clears throat> so come up with a plan and then or the permit would be granted if the plan my motion if it, if it if it passes Amy is 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 effectively saying that the Commission would go on record in in support of the demo it would give you the opportunity to move forward from that standpoint but prior to what to, to you actually being able to take out the demolition permit you would need to come back to it to get a plan approved by this body okay. for, for what the land's going to look like or what we're going to do with it you know um, so okay. no it's not a case where where if if this motion passes this way you don't get the demo permit go knock it down and then come I back realize that plan. I understand so. that um, is it going to be very is the is the ordinance or the ruling going to be very specific you know so that yeah not what am I trying to say so is it am I going to come up with a plan get the plan and then no that's not exactly what we wanted I mean as far as um, how the plan is laid out not necessarily what's there I realize you would say yes or no to the the plan but is it going to be clear on what I have to come up with so then I don't you know we don't have five more meetings and then it's like oh no that do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I'm understanding. You know what I'm, I'm understanding, to say. Amy, to ask: Is it a site improvement plan that you're looking for, where the species and the particular types of trees and plants are identified? Yeah. Is that what the um, commissioners would like to see? And I can sure, do Commissioner that, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Sure, I would say. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, ma'am. Thanks. I would say, yeah. I mean, as far as you know, species sizing, something that like we would have for uh, another commercial building. But understanding, and, and Michael, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, in some of these commercial developments, you know, um, plans that we approve um, can be slightly adjusted on, on site. It doesn't have to be to the inch of okay. where it's planted, um, but it needs to follow the general uh, layout and path. You know, I mean, granted, plants are organically growing they they're not it's not a built structure so they they grow bigger they than they were supposed to or they, they die right or so um you know that that in itself has a different look as it develops so as long as the vision is a little bit more clear as to what we can expect and i would have but it was pretty short notice thank you just a commissioner quick, jensen yeah. Rodney, would it be appropriate for Amy and Dennis to consult with you or Mike as to how exactly to fill this out to, to get to the proper 
They're consulting with the commission right now. <laughs> no, I mean, but I mean, could, after if if this passes, would it be proper uh, appropriate for them to come? We can provide them copies of other approved landscaping plans to give them an idea of what you've seen for other projects. Um, I don't think there's any vacant lot landscaping plans that we can point them to. Is that helpful? Yeah. yeah. I guess I would ask the commission if the conceptual plan looks looks like something that would be acceptable you know at least to give you guidance as to what what to plan you know I guess we would probably expect somebody to come back similar to what the conceptual plan would be not that you're gonna switch gears and do a 180 and plan something different I guess that's that's kind of what what would you provided already and so that's kind of what we're we're thinking that it's gonna come back similarly but just maybe a little bit more specific so Thank you. I had Commissioner Maloney and then Jensen. I think some of my questions were answered, but okay. uh, All right. um, thank you. Yeah. Alderperson Jensen. I just wanted to make one, one final comment here before we vote. Um, the, the subject of, of... I'm sorry, Greg, I can't the, hear you. The subject of whether this Planning Commission has the final say on it, if it's appropriate for, the, the, uh, for this commission to have the final say on this or not, is. Uh, it was pointed out that Attorney Dregney uh, said that it was and that it was appropriate for us to do so. Um, this Planning Commission is here and it has statutory duties. Uh, it's, it's laid out by statute. It's configured um, that way uh, on purpose uh, to, you know, where I appreciate what, uh, what uh, the alders were, um, what uh, board, no, yeah, Boris Sid. What Sid was saying, uh, uh, you know, I, I appreciate where, where he's coming from on that because I've, I've struggled with this myself. I mean, we've got another issue that's going to be coming up tomorrow as well. But um, the, the reason for it is to prevent any political footballs from happening, and that's exactly what this would have been if it went to council, is we would have had a political football. And... Um, there's, you know, we have three commissioners here that are elected and three commissioners that are, are professionals in the business. Um, I think it is appropriate for this committee, this commission, to make a decision tonight and have that be a final decision. And, um, well, I'll leave it at that. I, I don't, I don't want to make any more comments because it's not appropriate. Thank you. I think it's Michael, Michael you, Alders right. Ningelberger. Um, I'm going to vote no on this just because I'm not interested in in seeing a historic building on our downtown Main Street uh, be demolished, even though it may be delayed until uh, a plan is voted on by this uh, commission. Um, but I would still point out that under our current ordinance, uh, it, it states that the plan commission makes recommendation and the city council makes the final decision. That is a fact that's in our ordinance. And by not following that, uh, we're violating uh, not only our ordinances, but the state constitution. So I'm going to be voting no on this. Do you have that section again, Michael? I'm right here in, in yeah, our attorney's it uh, the number. It's yeah. in our attorney's uh, letter of the letter of uh, okay. January 20th. Yep. yep, okay, thank you, And he, he, uh, he and our staff re, uh, reassert that in other memos to the council and to the planning commission. Thank you. And to the owner. So we have an amendment to the motion to vote on that first, and I'm gonna ask Rodney or Michael to help um, repeat that for <laughs> me, because the minor scribbles that I wrote down. Um, to go back well, and find it. I think we're having to ad lib a little bit because I don't think the, the initial motion I think was to uh, recommend approval of the demolition. Of the and resolution. Of the, uh, the demolition. The demolition. Yeah. I don't think it was specific to the resolution. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, for approval by Hannah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then the subsequent amendment. One second. Yeah. Um, Prior to demo permit, a final site plan be submitted to Planning Commission. Second by Maloney. Yeah. Okay, so first we'll vote on that amendment, which states prior to demolition of the property, a site plan, um, a site plan would be presented to 
plan commission for their approval. Sure. Yeah. Commissioner Engelberg. Well, that wasn't just stated. So that's why I want to make sure what, what we're voting on here. That's not what Michael Did, just stated. I'm sorry if I added something. Michael, say it again. Um, that prior to a demolition permit, a final site plan be submitted to the planning commission. And for the landscaping. Okay. And, and I approved. added for approval. Yeah. I added for approval. Was that? Yes. What was anticipated? Sure. Yeah. Is that right? For approval. Plan commission needs to approve the site yep. plan Correct. before they can move yes. forward. I added those yes. two words for approval. Okay. That's and, okay. And that's, that's good. With, with my intent. Okay. Yeah, that was the intent. Okay. Thank you. It gets hard after a conversation to figure out the exact words. Thank you, Michael. So that's the amendment before our plan commission. All those in favor, aye. 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 No. No. That motion carries with Alderperson Engelberger voting no. That takes us to the original motion that this evening, which came from, turn my paper around, Commissioner Hanna with a second by um, Commissioner Maloney to approve demolition of this property at 305 315 East Main. Okay. Attorney Callan, is there anything else that we should approve or that we should um, include in this motion? Um, just that it's the, that the vote on the motion is based on the um, discussion preceding the motion. It's in the order. It's in and the going through those points in that um, resolution that we talked about and that I think have been adequately discussed by the commission. Okay, and is that S properly reflect? Okay, thank you. Just so I understand, so so effectively, if if you ultimately feel we we should be voting perhaps on the resolution, if the action is taken, if 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 the motion is to uh, is successful, and uh, to to demo the, the the property, I would assume that any place, just as we work our way through here, where you gave us an is or an is not or contribute or does not contribute, that those those elements would be consistent with that motion to either demo or not or or, or say. I think that's a fair way to to view the vote. As opposed to going, to, to, as opposed to going to each of these items and voting. Yeah, I mean, one alternative is to do what you suggest, or to uh, just to to look at H and I, and then um, the mo decide H and I, which are whether um, that you would find that um, the plan is in compliance with sound aesthetic land use site design and economic revitalization and then i is that it is consistent with the comprehensive plan to make those two findings and then based on that vote the question okay so discussion i believe to help help me on this one i'm yeah I, what i'm hearing you say is that we need to have discussion on this resolution um, item H yeah the and alternatively you could amend the motion to um, incorporate those findings in the motion so you could say um, I'm I move to um, approve the application based on the finding that the um, application and the plan is in compliance with sound aesthetic land use site design and economic revitalization and is consistent with comprehensive the comprehensive plan you see what i'm saying to build mm -hmm. to build those findings into the motion itself and i know that commissioner hannah did identify some of those reasons i apologize i didn't didn't write it down is it in your your best opinion we should go ahead and do that Let's fill this out. To, to amend the motion. If I could, Your sure. Honor. Yep. This is very simple. I mean, we're basically voting on a resolution <coughs> as amended that we just amended and it was voted on and passed. And we had an hour and three quarters of discussion regarding pluses and minuses or is or is not with those and they're on tape. So, yes. I mean, yep. we should vote. If, if all are comfortable do, with that. In my that. opinion, I mean, we, we've already discussed yeah. it. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm fine moving ahead. All right, I just wanted to be sure we were covering all of the bases. As Voting we on the about previous this. discussion, because I think it's, 
some of these aren't clear mm -hmm. one way or the other. Right. So, um, but on your the previous discussion has covered all of the yes. points as identified in this resolution. Yep. And if you all feel comfortable that you've done so, unless the attorney thinks we need to specifically point out, I mean, H or I or if I I would say a blanket yes or no would. I would recommend that you you decide H and I before you vote on the um, on the motion as as like I suggested as part of the motion. Okay, so how about if I do if I do this if um, as a part of the motion H says applying one or more of the foregoing factors the city plan commission finds that demolition of the structure and conversion of the property to open space and I'm going to use the word is that's what the motion Great. said yep. in compliance with sound aesthetic land use site design and economic revitalization practices all those in favor aye aye, aye. opposed no no there was that motion so carries with mayor one. made a motion how, how was that I'm trying to make I, I sure don't we I'm trying that. not to make a You're motion I'm just trying to get some I'd say who's amending it um just voting on that yes, please, of the Matt. Resolution. Can I make an amendment <coughs> to my motion? Please do so. All right. Um, motion for approval, um, which is a vote uh, on item H as is in compliance, and item I as is consistent with City of Stolen Comprehensive Plan. Thank you. So you made a motion to that I'll make a motion. just for the H and I? Okay. Yep. To amend that original motion. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. Second by Jensen. Conversation on that amendment. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. That motion carries with one no from Ingleberger. So that's an amendment. It still takes us back to the original motion to approve the demolition. There's a motion by Hannah. A sec I mean, we kind of did that, but there's still an open motion on the yeah. floor. What you're approving is the resolution as amended. Correct. For the second time. Well, well it's not the resolution. They didn't. No, not really the resolution, the motion. It's the as motion. As amended. His original twice motion. twice amended. Yeah, his original yeah. motion didn't act on the resolution. Right. His original motion indicated the desire to approve the application but it wasn't approving the resolution that's not that's what we voted on sticky. that's but where it gets sticky. that's not what we voted on matt described as we took it down you described your motion as a motion to approve the demolition as amended the, the resolution the, as the original amended. motion mr hannah made to move i said move for approval of the um of the resolution or of the of the resolution the resolution and then i stated mm -hmm. uh, the resolution without the recitals okay and now we've amended it to in, to include okay. recital h and i right. as um uh, completed within the motion and subject to the second which incorporates the requirement for a site plan to All be right. approved what I you know, what I say it was motion for approval, and then I kind of went through all these different items, right. referencing the resolution. And this is so important, so that's why we're taking our time to be sure we we do it right. So, um, when we prepare the minutes, we need to understand if there's any any um, none of the recitals are in there except for H and I. Is that how you'd interpret the action? That's how I. Um, uh, even recital A has ha here. Let me let me make sure we we do this clearly. Recital A is a description of the project. Is that supposed to be in this resolution as acted on? I'm looking to the commissioners for help because I I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Engelberger, that it's not ridiculous, but I want to make sure we get the minutes correct, and I'm not interpreting them properly, apparently. Um, so, so please help and um, give me some direction so that we get it proper. We just well, want it the way you acted could, on if it. If I could, Rodney, 
I mean, Your Honor, if I could. Yes, please. My understanding is what we did was the first amendment that, that uh, Commissioner Hanna made was a motion to approve the resolution as, as amended where it would come back. Uh, yeah, from... Yeah. And then the second true. amendment that we just did was mm -hmm. to approve the resolution as amended uh, with the H and I and H or whatever they are, Correct. And, and those were approved. Now, now getting back to the regular motion would be to approve the resolution as amended twice. And my understanding is that's what we just did. It, All right. And this is what we'd be voting on. Now, I don't know what's, so the, the what's not clear is, about Michael, that. The question is, Michael, there are lots of different blanks. We've never had a resolution that leaves uh, so many questions in a resolution. The resolution that was composed by Attorney Dragney and Laura Callen to help us be sure that we covered all the bases because this is such an important decision, leaves us questions as we go through the resolution. And that's what Rodney's asking for clarification on. If we vote to approve this resolution, it doesn't answer the questions. And I, I believe I heard Commissioner Hanna go through some of those answers at the very beginning, mm -hmm. but forgive us because that was an hour and a half ago. Right. So let's let's reiterate and help us go through walk through this so that we know the answers if we approve resolution 10 okay. what does that mean sure commissioner hannah um am i making a motion or am i just restating my help original us motion restate, please i yep. will restate my original motion that um just answer everything preserving the building is not um and uh detract from Contributes to opens. Where is contributes to? Two. Uh, no, two. Okay. Gotcha. Three. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, open space plan does. Is not. Does not find. Uh, just wait, correction, fines, uh, advance, advance. For those in the room, would you like us to read what this now says after we've circled does and doesn't? Everybody just says be done with it and move on, right? Is that what I'm seeing? Nods and shakes? Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, are you clear what the resolution, what the original motion to approve the resolution says at this point. No. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought we just voted on that. Did we did not. We voted on two amendments. We've not yet voted on the original motion, which was to approve resolution R10-2017, allowing for the demolition of the property. As amended. It's amended. Well, we vote on the original motion. We had two amendments subsequently. Right. And due to Robert's rules, or following Robert's rules, you vote on the amendment, so you kind of go backwards. Amendment, second amendment, right. first amendment, right. back to the original. And now you vote on the... We're on back the to the original. Resolution as amended twice. Yep. That's the process. Sure. Now, now yeah, I think where I think we are, sure. we are, we have a restated motion with one amendment, is one way to look at it. It's okay. been restated by Mr. Hanna just yep. now. Yep. Um, to... to answer the questions in each of the um, recitals, E, F, G, H, and I. Yes. And the amendment is to that prior to issuance of the building perm or the demolition permit, um, the applicant shall submit a final site plan uh, to the plan commission for approval. Correct. All right, so we understand what we're voting on. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Motion carries with Alder Person. Commissioner Engelberger voting no. Thank you. Back to our um, second item on our plan commission agenda this evening is agenda item six.
This is a request by Don Walker for site plan approval to replace the pavement at 1512 West Main Street. I know Rodney's getting a map for us. Mr. Walker is here. Um, essentially, he's looking at replacing in kind the pavement surface that's on site and expanding it slightly to increase the, the area nearest the buildings and allow for better turning movement uh, up in this general area. Does that correctly de depict your request? Thank you. Commissioners, comments or questions? Move for approval. Second. It's a motion by Hannah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second by Truel. Comments or questions? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> Joe Gallagher is requesting a site plan approval for a vestibule addition at the Mant Community Center, 400 Mant Parkway. This item on your screen uh, de depicts the principal area where they're looking at installing a vestibule in the front part of this building. Um, you can see that the configuration for the accessible stalls are also depicted on the plan to allow for better entry into the building. Applicants are here, either answer questions or elaborate on what I just said. Does that summarize it or? If you'd like to step here. up to yeah. the microphone, please, so I'm folks sorry. at home can hear the conversation. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Um, Joseph sure. Gallagher with uh, Destry Design Architects in Madison. Um, basically, how you just described it is correct. Um, we would be looking to um, put the new vestibule in. Um, we would be removing a portion of the existing overhang and actually relocating it over the entrance to the fairgrounds offices just to, um, you know, tie the two entries together, um, just a more aesthetic appearance. Um, yeah, I have I have samples of the you know the CMU that we're looking to use. Um, I can elaborate on anything if there's any questions. Thank you, Commissioner Maloney. Is, is it matching uh, the existing? Yes, yes. The plan is um, the actually here. I'll show you the. The plan for now is that um, the bottom uh, would be a, a darker band of split face CMU with a precast uh, ledge element that would uh, travel across. And then the remainder of um, the CMU would, would be a smooth CMU that would just match the color of the existing um, Mant Center. Thank you. Okay. Motion Comments. to approve. Second. So motion by Engelberger, second by Truel. Further comments or question, Commissioner Hanna? Um, yeah, I was wondering if we just reference the staff review letter. There's just a note on landscaping that's required. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. So we are planning on. Um, just go back here. I have reached out to Brett Hebert, um, the public works director, regarding um, terrace trees that are going to be planted along Man Parkway. Um, so that conversation is in the works. We are also looking at landscaping. The, the site plan up there. Um, there is a, I'm going to call it an, an oval, like circular shaped um, space. When you approach from the fairgrounds entrance, we're going to be doing some landscaping there as well. Um, it's currently just a grassy kind of dirt patch, but we're going to. This area here? Yes, correct. <clears throat> And there is some there is some landscaping that runs along the building. It's currently uh, just graveled areas that will be putting some plantings in as well. That should definitely put us over <clears throat> the requirements. Thank you, Commissioner Hanna. Sure. So the twenty further required points will be put into that that space, right? That Correct. Yes, we'll be doing some work in that space that was highlighted, and just some you know small shrubbery along the building. Great. In those Thank areas. you. Thank you. Any additional comments or questions? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. A request by Mark Seidel of Pinnacle Engineering for a certified survey map, a CSM approval, 
for the Aldi's Food Market at 1399 U.S. Highway 51. Planning Director Shiel. Uh, containing your packet is the item uh, before you as well as on the screen. Um, you'll note the principal change to this is really their attempt to remove um, an, an access point that was reserved for future right-of-way purposes back in the, the days of the town when it was in the town of, of Rutland. As you can see, they even allowed building over it in the past. <laughs> so uh, I think there isn't any reason to retain that, that easement in our minds. Move approval. Second. Second. Motion by Truel, second by Hannah. Conversation? Commissioner Engelberg. Thank you, Honor. A uh, question for Rodney. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't we do something with a sidewalk regarding this property a while back? Yeah, the site plan was before us already. Okay. And the sidewalk is, is planned to be installed along here. Recall along this frontage there is actually a 10-foot wide shared use path. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then there will be a sidewalk extending to this. This isn't the site plan. This is just the CSM associated with it. During their transaction to acquire the property, they closed on it actually last week. The open-ended item was this um, recently discovered. Okay. And then what needs to come back, Rodney? Um, it does not. The this is SIP? recommendation to council. This is just a recommendation to council. Right. The site plan is, and everything's been approved for the Aldi's okay. facility to move forward. The SIP has been approved already. It was a site plan. It wasn't an SIP. It wasn't so we're part not of a GDP. Approving anything with regard to the building, or we did already. Oh, we did that already. Yep. Okay. We've done the building and site plan. Okay. It's just the survey so adjustment. Second access. Point. Okay. I'm sorry. It's Thank just you. a survey adjustment. Yep. Correct. Yep. Correct. I think there may be uh, just a question. There was an older site plan in here that didn't show the sidewalk, so maybe that was just a prior version? or yeah, um, It was a requirement of the ultimate. You're correct. Okay. Any additional comments? Sorry, I think let's look to see if we can find that sidewalk. Well, it, it was a condition of the approval, so oh, no, for the site plan. Sure. Yep. It's in there. All right. Thank you. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. A request by Brenda and Todd Barman for a site plan approval to reconstruct the parking area at 603 West Main Street. Planning Director Shield. Um, due to technical difficulties, I'm not able to pull this plan up in front of you, but Mr. Barman is here, and the commissioners have it in their packet and in their electronic files. Um, for this site plan um, and essentially redevelopment of, of an existing site. So Mr. Barman maybe could probably provide you the best insight into the strategy they're, they're utilizing here. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Todd Barman, uh, this is for 603 West Main Street, uh, the former Sickle Food Mart. I, I, I'm welcome to answer any questions you might have. I mean, unless you just want me to kind of give a, a basic description of what we're doing. Just a quick overview, Start please. A, a quick overview is that we bought the property uh, about two and a half, three years ago. Um, it had sat vacant for a couple of years before that. We purchased it um, um, while it was still Retro, I mean, it was still set up to be a gas station petroleum service business with the, the food mart. We've pulled the tanks. Ground is clean. Um, the, the, uh, we have not put the concrete back yet because of the, uh, the amount of pea gravel and everything else, we wanted it to settle over time before we put anything back over the top. So um, this is to, to bring the parking lot back um, but in addition to just resurfacing what used to be the, you know, almost 100% concrete throughout the whole site, um, we're going to be putting retail in the, the building. So we wanted to bring some landscape back in. Um, so we're bringing grass back into the, the apron area between the sidewalk and the street. Um, eventually, we'll have curb and gutter to eliminate a, a, a significant amount of the curb cut. So we'll just have the two primary curb cuts off of uh, Monroe Street and off of Maine. Um, we've really tried as best we can to meet um, all the current code as relates to the planned business zoning class. Um, but if, if we, as we look to lay out the site to meet every single requirement of the, the current code, if we were building brand new, which we aren't, um, you'd only be able to get about three parking stalls within that space because of all the setbacks. And so we've tried to kind of balance 
you know, getting a significant amount of setback on the inside of the sidewalk, particularly between the two parking areas to eliminate what we call cross cutting. We own the residential property right next door. And one of the things we've observed over the years is how dangerous that intersection is because people, when it was even a gas station, would cut across, they, they shortcut when they're coming down Main heading east, they would cut across that lot to head into Quick Trip parking lot. Um, this would prevent all of that because you've got the, the majority of the landscaping between the two parking areas. Um, it also makes for a nicer entrance to the building. So that's, that's the main thing, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Engelberger. Thank you, Your Honor. I just, just wanted to, is, is it going to be an ice cream shop? Is that what it is? A sweet shop. A sweet shop? Yeah. Okay, and we, when are you planning on opening? Well, we were hoping by Sentinel Mai, but I, I, it's probably going to be cutting a little bit close. We're still getting uh, estimates on the, the concrete contractors. Uh, we had to go before you guys to get all this stuff approved, which hopefully we will. Um, so we may not make Sentinel Mai, but shortly thereafter. Um, we won't have ice cream immediately. Um, just because there's a little bit more investment in terms of equipment with the ice cream, we're going to start with other kinds of sweets. And, and then um, my wife's an artist. Originally, we were going to put art in the building. Um, and, and art's a little bit of a challenge, um, in part because there's a lot of art businesses already in the downtown and in the district. Um, and so she may still have some of her art in there as well to complement the sweets. But that's the plan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hanna and then Troy. Thanks. Um, yeah, my question would just be about uh, the screening for the garbage bins from the street. Do yes. you have a, an idea of what that is going to look yep. like or materials? Yeah, the, um, I don't know if you've driven by the site. With right now, there is the, the picket fence that runs between our property, which is further down Monroe Street. I don't know if it's visible in any of the shots we've got. Um, but it's, it's um, essentially it would be a completely um, opaque. Uh, completely opaque picket six foot high um, we would essentially mount there's already concrete slab existing where that is so we would use the the steel brackets that would anchor the two four by four posts and then we would attach the six foot high completely opaque screen that would match the wraparound um, picket fence that it separates our property our residential property from the building so yes yeah, so there already is a picket fence existing on the south side of the lot yes and it's to be attached to it so yes it's, it's going to be screened basically from the south and the west and then yes you will there will there'll be a small uh, three foot opening access that allow you to pull the right now we're not doing a dumpster mm -hmm. we've just got the the you know the wheel bins that we've sure. got a little bit bigger than the typical residential one because the garbage service likes us to wheel those out to the street sure and so we'll still have to kind of pull them through and that's one of the reasons why we're not having Right now, there's a sidewalk that's up against the building, mm -hmm. and when they excavated to pull the tanks out, they had to undercut the sidewalk and the building, so the sidewalk has since sure. sunk. So we're going to have to pull that out, and we're not putting the sidewalk back in. We're just going to have the, the paving for the lot just go Parking. seamlessly straight up to the building that allows us not only to have better ADA access, but it also allows us to wheel those bins through easier. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Commissioner Truel. Thank you, Your Honor. And it just aesthetically, it looks like all you're really proposing to do is is add some uh, horizontal elements and, and perhaps just tie in some colors here a little bit? Or In terms of the landscaping or the building itself? The building itself. Building itself, ultimately we want to um, uh, carefully remove some of the additional paint that's still on the building. One of the, the cool features of the, the building itself is that it's got the local stone on the lower courses and then it's got the bricks above. The bricks above have been painted. And we've, we've used a uh, environmentally safe chemical stripper on parts of the building just to see how well it would come off. On the front, we have not done that yet. So eventually we want, particularly you can see here on the, the tall chimney, the chimney is really distinctive in that it's got the cream brick in the center, and then on the corners, each of the corners that kind of come out three-dimensionally is a the is a the higher quality red brick that you'll see on the building. Okay. So eventually, we would like to get all that off as as money starts. The building's got to start generating some money for us in order to be able to do some of the more aesthetic kinds of things that we want to do. Um, but yeah, that, otherwise, all we're changing is we've or we've already added um, the the lights, the gooseneck lights that will light where we plan to put signs, which is another application we'll have to submit for the sign locations and get those permitted.
but there'll be one sign on this side that faced quick strip and then there'll be the two signs that will go across the front of the building just above the garage doors that we brought back thank you any additional comments or questions you can see where I've simulated the red coarse brick on the chimney so hopefully hopefully all that comes through and looks I mean right now it's looking real close that simulation was done even before we had brought the, gar the garage doors back and put the lights up and so it's we're already moving pretty well toward this direction yeah. that looks very nice I move for approval motion by Hannah yeah. of, the res of the resolution second <laughs> And second by Truel. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Future agenda items. Conference and plan discussion um, will be on the May the, the May meeting, uh, so that will be on the the agenda at the next planning commission meeting. Um, Iconica, the senior housing proposal on the end of Jackson Street. Um, the newer new hundred unit multifamily slash um, senior care housing is in our office now and anticipate having a meeting on that on May 10th uh, May 8th and there's one other item oh GDP amendment potentially GDP amendment for um, uh, several of the lots within the commercial center of Car um, Kettle Park West tractor supply and tractor supply for their conditional use uh, re reuse of the mid uh, at least half of the former Walmart facility will be on the May 8th meeting agenda as well all right thank you you know which half Rodney the western half there's some documents already available online on the website yeah that's right move for uh, <laughs> adjournment. Approval. Yeah, approval. Approval. Just approval. Approval? <laughs> approval for adjournment. You can approve adjourning. Thank you. Is I'll there a second? In the form of a resolution. Second by Jensen. Yeah. All those in favor, aye. 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 Yes. No? <laughs> motion carries. See, Matt, you make all the motions tonight. You got yourself yeah. confused when you get to the end. <clears throat> so, Tractor Supply website has um, information. All website. Our sit at our under the okay. Planning Commission meeting. I haven't gone out there to look. Okay. Why? <coughs> and just so you guys know, I was not.